Hey everyone, Mr. Tegmar here again. This is part two of the moments presentation. And you recall in part one, we went through some basic things, some definitions and some examples, some very uh, simple examples. And we learned that the formula for a moment, also called a torque, is d cross f or d times f, or you could even take force times distance if you wanted to. So let's take a look at some examples. So here's our trusty wrench again, and we have a force applied. Our force for this example is going to be 20 pounds, and we're going to use this 20 pounds uh, pretty much throughout. What we're going to do is we're going to change this wrench, and we're going to see um, as we change it how it affects our, uh, our moment examples. So we have a 20 pound force, and we have, we're applying that at 9 inches from the uh, pivot point. And when we apply our moment formula, d cross f, we want to make sure that we determine whether it's positive or negative. And we're using the right hand rule. This is going to tend to, this force is going to tend to rotate this in the clockwise direction, which means it is negative. So let's do a little math. First thing we can do, we don't have to, by the way, uh, but in this example and the following examples, we're going to use pound feet or foot pounds, however you want to say that. Uh, so we're going to convert all the inches to feet. So in this case, nine inches is three quarters of a foot. And when we plug in our other math, we have 20 pounds times uh, 0.75 feet. We put the negative there because it is rotating clockwise. So we end up with a moment of minus 15 foot-pounds. Or we could say, alternately, 15 foot-pounds clockwise. Let's take that wrench and let's make it just a little bit longer. Math is a little bit easier, and let's see what happens to our moment. So here we have our same wrench. It's a little bit longer. It's a foot now instead of 9 inches, and there's our... 20 pounds of force using the same formula d cross f or d times f we plug in our numbers 20 times 1 that's pretty easy so the magnitude is 20 uh, because it's rotating in the clockwise direction it's minus 20 foot pounds or again we could say 20 foot pounds clockwise well let's change our wrench one more time so it's, we still have a distance D of one foot, but it's going to go up three inches. And remember from part one, where we said that the uh, distance is actually the perpendicular distance compared to the uh, point of rotation. So it has to be perpendicular. So here you can see this is perpendicular, the three inches, but it's parallel here. It's parallel to this distance. So we don't want the one foot, we want the three inch distance. So what does that math look like? Well, uh, three inches is a quarter feet. We apply our formula, d cross f. So when we do the math, it's 20 pounds times quarter of a foot. And of course, we apply the negative sign, we actually end up with minus five, which is less than what we calculated with the uh, distance, uh, the perpendicular distance, and the force going down like this. Big difference. Very important to know. Let's change our wrench one more time. So we still have our 20 pounds, and we're still rotating it uh, clockwise, so our moment is going to be negative. But we've changed our wrench a little bit more. We've extended the 3 inches to 9. And we've extended the length to 18 inches. So our perpendicular distance in this case is along that 18 inches, not the 9. Very important to know. So our distance here is 8 plus 10, or a foot and a half, 18 inches. We apply D cross F, so we have 20 pounds times a foot and a half. We end up with 30 foot pounds and begin because it is going in the clockwise direction it is negative. And you might ask yourself, self, why are we looking at all these crazy shaped tools? Do such tools exist? Actually they do, 
but one of the reasons that we're really going over this is because we need to apply these concepts. We have to understand the concepts of applying the force and the uh, orthogonal or normal or perpendicular uh, distance and being able to look at a diagram and understanding which distance is perpendicular. In this case it's not 9, it's 18. That's something very important as we progress and get into truss calculations. So please make sure that you understand it. Well, you are now a pilgrim. You're the captain of your own ship. And let's apply the, uh, hey, there's a wheel and axle. We recognize that from the first part of the course. Let's apply moments or torques to, uh, to this example. So to steer your ship, you have to apply uh, 100 newtons. So here, make sure that we recognize we're switching from English units, which we've been using, and we're now using the metric system. So our force is newtons. And so what is our distance? Well, our perpendicular distance to the point of rotation is 50 centimeters. That's going to tend to rotate counterclockwise. So we're going to change our centimeters to meters because that's a little bit easier to work with. So 50 centimeters is really half of a meter. And we're going to apply our formula of m equals d cross f. And again, the right-hand rule, We just uh, just a reminder that counterclockwise is positive. When we plug in our numbers, 100 newtons times half a meter gives us 50 newton meters. And we don't have to put the plus there. It's just assumed that if we don't put negative, it's positive, uh, just like we would in everyday math. If we don't, we don't have to put the positive, it's always assumed. But, uh-oh, you hit a wave. There's water on the deck. You slip and fall. So your 100 newtons, which you still apply, is now applied at an angle of 50 degrees. Well, now what does that moment look like? Well, we still have the half a meter, or 50 centimeters, to the point of rotation, but we have a little bit of a problem because we don't really have a perpendicular force. We have a perpendicular distance, but our force is not perpendicular. So we need to do some trigonometry. So we just got done working with um, force diagrams, or free body diagrams, and we learned how to calculate the y component and the x component. That's what we have to do here. So our perpendicular force component, as you see here, is f sub y. That is what we need to calculate. So to do that, we just do a little trigonometry. So f sub y is just f times the sine of 50 degrees, and f is 100. Sine of 50 degrees is 0.766. So our force now is not 100, it's something less. It's 76.6 newtons. So now we know that, we can apply our formula. M equals D cross F. In this case, F is Fy, and we have to use that because that gives us the perpendicular force and distance. So when we plug in those numbers, we get 38 newton meters, and again, it's rotating counterclockwise, so it is positive. And that concludes part two.